Hello, hi. This is Maggie. Nice to meet you. Uh, my right. question is for uh, Jimmy. Uh, uh, Jimmy. So I was wondering because uh, you have a lot of dance uh, sequence. Uh, well, I was wondering, do you have to do some uh, physical trainings? Uh, what kind of preparation for uh, for you you have to done uh, for this role? And uh, for the producer, I was just wondering, uh, were we ever gonna find out? You know, who is uh, his mother? And you know. <laughs> More about you know Jimmy's character. Thanks. So I'm I'm gonna answer first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I have like um stunt training for three weeks before we start shooting, and I have to learn like how to control the jingu bang the stick, and it was pretty hard at the beginning, but it started getting easier after I know how to like. Communicate with the stick, yeah. Can I can I add something that Jimmy left yeah. out? Uh, when we um, had our casting meeting with him, this is what he said. This is what he told us: "I'm a Taekwondo champion." <laughs> Why didn't you say that, Jimmy? You say that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he did. You did you say, that. say that right now, so everybody knows. Well, yeah, I am actually. I am a Taekwondo champion in Taiwan. Yeah, he got his black belt when he was ten, so that's yeah. pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy came in, came in hot. <laughs> it's like, guys, listen, I'm a champion. You want me? <laughs> <laughs> pretty confident, dude. No, not just champion. <laughs> champion number one. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We'll move on to our next question. Um, nerds rule the world. You're up next. Thank you. Hi, I'm Heather. Um, I just want to say I am a comic retailer first and a press member second. So, Jean, this is to you, sir. How are you feeling? One of the most popular books that a lot of kids have been able to been get really excited and they can see themselves. How are you feeling that the show is right around the corner and everyone gets to see it? Well, well, first, thank you. Thank you so much for being a comic book retailer. I know that um, the last uh, several years have not been easy. So, and and I know from my just watching my own shop, my own local shop, deal with things that you guys are an incredibly, incredibly creative and persevering um, group of people. So, thank thank you so much. Thank you for being a, a comic shop retailer. Um, I it's it's I've used this word a lot. It's very surreal to to be in this moment. You know, to to be on the Zoom with. Uh, with movie stars and TV stars, and and also to sort of see the story get out to a wider audience. I remember doing the comic as a self-published comic when I was in my 20s. And the reason I self-published it was because I just didn't think that many people would be interested in a story about an Asian American boy. So to have it on Disney Plus now just shows that uh, people can connect with our stories, and that's incredibly gratifying. Next up, we have fresh pair of eyes. Hi, I'm Ariana. Um, this question is for uh, Jimmy and Daniel. How did you guys build the father son relationship in that rapport when you're usually fighting literally physically most of the series? Uh, I think we, you know, we tried to bond as much as we could possible um, offset. And so it helps that Jimmy is a Warriors fan. Yeah, because he was a Lakers fan. I don't think I could have bonded with him as well. <laughs> but because of that, um, you know, we watched the, the, the playoffs and the finals were going on while we were filming this. So we were constantly in between fight scenes, like watching the game on my iPad and then going back out to fight. Um, but yeah, I think it was a natural relationship. You know, Jimmy's a good looking guy, kind of like me, you know, and so <laughs> we developed that bond uh, over that. I mean, you could tell Jimmy and Daniel are just lovely people. Some of my favorite people. Um, they have suspect basketball tastes. So um, there you go. We're it was still a match made in that way in game seven. <laughs> you have to get past game six. That's tonight. Yeah, it's tonight. It'll That's be, easy. Yeah. Easy. That'll easy. Be easy. Done. Right. Done. Yeah. Yeah, they're annoying about basketball. That's how. The, that's the rapport. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah jimmy i really admire jimmy he's like super hard worker um yeah. the fight scenes were not easy at all i've spent years on wire work it was the first time for him and he was just like amazing with it 
um, totally cool cucumber all the time, never stressed out, and just good to see his work ethic. So it was easy to work with him, easy. Thank you. All right, up next is All Ages of Geek. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, good, how are you? I Good, good. Uh, so it is a AAPI month and uh, I kind of wanted to ask this question to both Daniel and Jimmy, but uh, Gene and Melo, you guys can jump in if you'd like. Um, my question is, um, do you guys think that the xenophobia and the stereotypes towards Asians is getting better or worse? Um, like uh, in recent years, like with all these new shows that are coming that are giving Asian representation, like, do you guys feel like it's, um, has it changed for the better? Yeah, I think things have changed a lot in the past five to 10 years, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, especially certainly since when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, um, where you had very, very little representation. And if you did, it was it was bad representation. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing more authentic representation. But at the same time, we're seeing, you know, as we saw during COVID, you know, Asian hate crimes happening. And that's a lot to do with political rhetoric outside of the entertainment business. And, you mm -hmm. know, and it's ramping up now with talks about Cold War and this and that. And so that's things that we have to be vigilant about. And that's why representation is so important for us, because what we learned during, you know, COVID was that a lot of Americans look at Asian Americans as non-Americans, as perpetual mm -hmm. foreigners, right? And so shows like this and with greater diversity and more representation, representation show that we are actually part of the American fabric. And what I love yeah. about American born Chinese is it's telling a very specific Chinese American story, but at the same time, it's a very universal story about mm -hmm. a kid just trying to want to fit in and figure himself out. And I think everybody in this country has felt that way in high school, you know, at some point. And so we're trying to, you know, with, with, with a little bit of soft power, you know, influence people to realize that we're all the same. There really shouldn't mm -hmm. be divisions like we have right now. That's right. I, I, in a lot of ways, sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mo. No, go ahead, Jane, please, please. No, I was going to say, and I think in a lot of ways, um, Daniel's career shows the progress of Asian mm -hmm. Americans because Daniel is a Asian American. He, I, yeah. he grew up in the, in the Bay area, hence the, the warrior fanness of him. Um, but, um, no, but he's perfect, but, <laughs> but he, he, uh, he's like in a lot of people in America don't realize this, but in Asia, he is like a, like a mega star where he can't walk down the street without yeah. getting mobbed. He can't go into a regular restaurant and just eat a meal because he's yeah. so intensely famous. He's like a Jackie Chan level star, okay. right? Even okay. though, okay. even though he's yeah. one of us, <laughs> even though he's, he's an Asian American. And, and the fact that he, um, the fact that he's, he's finally able to, to kind of make some, you know, like a, like breakthrough into uh, American culture shows that maybe America is finally ready for an, a, a real Asian American superstar. Yeah. And, and I second what Gene said and, you know, which is you look at Daniel's career, um, we're about the same age and he went to Asia, you know, to be in stuff. And there was a huge part of when we were growing up. And even when I was getting started in this business where it just wasn't a thing we did, which was Asian American lead. Right. And, I mean, I mean, I'm sure he has a really interesting point of view on it now that he's like back in the States, you know, coming back to the industry, which is, you know, uh, now we have shows like American Born Chinese and, and you know, movies like Crazy Rich Asians and whatnot. And then we're like, you know, importing Jimmy Liu from Taiwan, you know, and um, I think all of that helps the overall um, idea of uh, narrative change for Asian Americans. Mm. Hi, it's Shireen from Geek Girl Riot, and Hi. this is Gene. This is for Gina Melvin. And looking at the graphic novel, some of the conversations have taken on new shapes. How did you and the rest of the creative team go about reshaping this story while maintaining the essence that so many of us love? Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, Melvin. No, I was I was going to throw it to you, Gene, but I oh. was going to say that um, it's a pity that our, our, our colleague Kelvin, you couldn't be here, but because I, I think he was he's like the genius showrunner that figured out a, a really good version of this. And I, I think this sort of connects to Gene's uh, hesitance on, on adapting it to begin with. And and let's just sort of connect that, Gene. Like, 
Yeah, that, that's exactly okay. it. I, it it yeah. is. I am sad too. Uh, I think we all are that, that Kelvin couldn't join us. Um, yeah. He he put so much of his his uh, his brain and his heart into this show. Mm-hmm. I, I can't really imagine anybody else being able to to do what he did. Um, but I was very hesitant for a very long time. You know, I, I I had a little bit of interest early on. The book was published in 2006, and I was always hesitant because I was worried that. Um, some of the parts of the book would be adapted poorly. And if you adapt it poorly, then you actually might undermine the the, the point. You might undermine the message. Uh, ultimately, Calvin and, and Melvin and I, we had multiple conversations. And from those conversations, I got the sense that these guys really got it. You know, these guys really understood. Uh, early on, we made the decision to move the story from like the vague 80s, 90s, which is when the book is set, to 2023, you know, to, to a modern day story. And, this, and the conversation about Asian Americans has changed from then until now. So the, the hope is that both the book and the television series express the same core and that they're kind of in dialogue with each other, that when you read the book and then also watch the show, you kind of get a sense of how Asian America has changed over the last 17 years. And next up is going to be Mama's Geeky. Hi guys, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, Jimmy, I wanted to talk to you uh, just, uh, can you talk about working with Michelle? Because I love some of your scenes together. Oh, she she is uh, like a very warm and kind, like a, she's like really auntie to me because when we're on set, she's always like hugging me and give me a like, um, what do I say this? Like, anyway, she's like really kind, and the scenes we do together, and I've been really happy to be with her. 